Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Doing stuff and forgot to turn the, 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 the cameras on. <laughs> oh, never mind. Anyway, good morning, everybody. We're here again and we're back. We're back. So, um, anyhow, lots of little things today. So, first of all, there was a couple of people who wrote uh, uh, notes on a uh, um, uh, live chat about things they were, they were having a little play with next or during the week. So first up, uh, Jason, how did you go with your variable joint spaces? Uh, you were, you were <coughs> a bit apprehensive about that by the sound of things. So I hope things have uh, worked out fine for you. Um, let me know. So I'd, I'd like to know. But anyway, the other one was, uh, I, I, I have to have a check. Um, Dave Tozer, I don't know if you're up yet, Dave, but uh, Dave was actually making his first box. Oh, yes, he is. There he is. He's, uh, he's just popped in. So um, how'd you go with your boxes, Dave? Your first, first time around and you're having a bit of a play with that. So let's, let, let me know how you get on. So, uh, yeah, and I think everybody would like to know that as well. So welcome to Skip. Oh, it's good evening, Skip. I heard, yeah, so in the US. But anyway, now, during the week, I... I got to a point where I actually fitted the door on uh, the, the single cabinet. So it, it's actually got a door on it now. And one of the things that, that popped up during the process of working out how to keep it shut, how to, how to, what sort of keeper to put on there, and I decided on little magnets. And so I thought yeah, if I just put a magnet here and another one at the bottom and then put a little draw, door pull on there, that would be fine. I can do that, right? But... I went along to uh, a big green store that I occasionally go into and I bought myself some magnets. That's these here. So I'll just... Now here's the trap. These are the magnets. They're just little rare earth magnets. Whoop. You can see they're, they're actually quite strong. There's a whole bunch of them. And this is the packet that it comes on. All right, the packet says magnets, of course, uh, extra strong, which they are. Um, a disc magnet, which they are, and there was 10 of them in there, which it is. But then you get down to this information here, where it says eight millimeter diameter, three millimeters in depth. Oop, get off there. Now, what I did, and this is a trap for the unwary, because normally what would happen is we turn around and you would um, go, oh, okay, so it says on the packet, eight millimetres. So you go and drill yourself an eight millimetre hole or something in here, and then you get this result without checking. <clears throat> so if I put the magnet in there, it fits in the hole, but it's as loose as, so it doesn't fit very nice at all. So it says here that it's eight mil. I thought, okay, maybe they've got that wrong. So I'll drill a 7.5 mil hole, which is what I did. It doesn't actually fit in the 7.5 hole. So it's in between 7.5 and eight mil. And as you can see, I've drilled a 5 16th hole and it fits in there absolutely perfect. So they're actually not eight mil, as it says on the packet. So the trap, and this is the thing that I was, uh, I'm, I'm alluding to, is always check, if you've bought something that's going to be fitted somewhere, check to see that the measurements that are given on the packets and things like that are actually right. I, I personally think that this is made for probably the Euro European market or the US market and what they've done is just shoved them in a packet and labelled it marketed for Australia which it says on the back here it's made in China for um, the Australian market I think they've forgotten that we use uh, metric measurements and not imperial but anyway that's a little trap that you should should uh, just check on and uh, just make sure that um, You've got it right when you when you go to put things together. Otherwise, you end up with issues here, and particularly when you look at the box, you can see that the box 
is, is, is pretty much at a finished stage. I've got the finish on it, I've got all the parts in the box, and if I made a mistake here now, I'm going to have to make a new door um, or, or do a repair on a door that I don't really want to do. So just keep your eye on that when you're doing things like that. It's, it's a trap for the unwary, I think. So anyway. Haven't fixed it? No, and I don't think it's the, the fan. No. I'll have to have another look at that um, skip. I'm not quite sure. We don't know why it's happening. And we don't know why it's happening. It hasn't been occurring in my system here. I can't hear it at all. Um, so I don't know. And Dave Rowland, you've got it as well. Okay. Um, we turned I, the sound down. I turned the sound down to normal, and I don't know if it's as loud as it was last week. Um, what do you think? Don't know. Anyway, bear with it, <coughs> please. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out next week. Sort of can't do it on the air at the moment. Okay. I'll try not to make too much noise. <laughs> bit hard in a workshop eh? It's better than last week. Yeah I think you're right Brian. It is a little bit better than last week so um, yeah bear with me for a while. We'll have another little play with it. It might be that I've tried to put Pam's uh, audio system on the on the um, um, the handpiece and it, and it didn't didn't quite work and I haven't turned it off it so that might be the case. So I'll, we'll have a look at that during the week. Anyhow Let's get on with the show anyway, we'll get, we'll get started. So what we're going to do today, I, I've, I've got the, the two cabinets done. This, this cabinet here, this is where we're going to go with this. We're going to make the base for the big cabinet, so the foot plate, and we're also going to make a shelf. Now, um, Jimmy Carroll mentioned something about a shelf uh, right back in episode one and that was always the case that it would have to have a, uh, a centre shelf to actually stabilise the glass in the box. Now the thing with it is the foot plate needs to have a recess in it so the glass will actually sit in there and not slide around. The shelf also needs a tapered centre in the top here for this reason and I'll go back to the other the other box for that one if I bring this one in here can't actually pull the glass out because the center shelf the hole in here is actually tapered the same shape as the glass stem you can see the glass stem has has a shape now you say, why are you fiddling around with all of that, that detail? <clears throat> the detail is part of what planning's all about. You need to sort of look at what's going to happen to the box, why you're building it to start with, to get all of those little components fixed right and working the way you want them to work, and that takes planning. You can't just, if you have a, a plan given to you, and things don't go right, measurements are wrong, or um, the way the way the, the, the box is put together, <clears throat> you're never going to get a result that you desire. So this is where you have to understand how planning goes. And now, like I say, it's a very simple process. It doesn't take long, step by step, right? So the idea of this one here, as you can see, we've got a foot plate with a recess in it, and we've got a tapered, um, um, hole there and also the the gap in the front of that is is um, small enough to take the lower section so that when it drops in it will sit into the into the right place you also notice what I've done is I've cut a rebate or not a rebate but a little curve in the front of it just to give it a bit of detail so it's a step up from this one Okay, so during the process of planning and designing, I've decided that looks nicer than this. 
So that's some of the things that we're going to, to look at today. All right, so that actually goes in. It won't fit in straight away. You'll actually have to lift it and then drop it down and it fits in nicely. Okay, so we're going to plan that. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to have a look at our box. Now last week, what we did is we cut the rebate in the back of the box and somebody asked me about the 90 degree spring loaded chisel, which is this little gadget here. So it's got a spring loaded chisel, is, you can see it, it pops in and out and it's quite sharp on here, you need to make sure that that's sharp all the time, so it's a matter of pulling it out and adjusting it and sharpening it. So it'll last quite some time if you're only using small small bits. But this is this is the gear that, it's, it's made for carpet tech. Um, this is the one that, um, that Dave Stanton actually sent me. And it's um, it's actually quite a quite a quite a neat little tool. You can buy uh, a Sorby's tool, or you can buy um, uh, a hand chisel that that has a corner that has an angle on it, and you can use that with a mallet if you like. But I found this here actually did quite a nice little job for this sort of task. So it was only small. So for those of you who are looking for something like that, get on to um, Carbotech. They, they will have that little chisel. And that will give you nice sharp corners for there. So what we had to do is we had to build, and I did it while you were sleeping, I built the back panel out of rose mahogany so that it fits in there quite nicely. Now, it, it, it's not hard to do that. I've just made sure that it's um, uh, four millimeters, which is the depth of the rebate. So that will give me actually quite a nice rebate. If you have a look at these boxes here, I've done the same on here with the, with the, um, the jacaranda on the, the walnut frame. And I did the same on this one here silky oak frame with um, a red a red um, banksia back in it you can see once you've got a finish on them they look quite nice so that's the sort of thing that we're looking at so i've done that it's only glued in too so you can nail it in if you like or screw it in um, but because there's no pressure on it really don't need any mechanical um, fastening system on it so now what we're up to do is we have to make the foot plate. Now the foot plate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself a foot plate out of another piece of rose mahogany. So my matching timbers for this one, rose mahogany and silky oak. So a piece of, uh, a piece of rose mahogany and all that's going to do is going to be fitted into there. So I have to cut it to exactly that size. Now, this is the important thing. As you work through, remember this is all about planning, as you work through, you need to start making details or putting details on your, your plan sheets. Now, they're only simple sketches. Like I say, it's not hard, it's, it's fairly simple, and you're working in the real. You're working with things that are actually happening now. So you've got measurements. You can measure the inside of that, um, in the inside of the box, to, to give you all your different measurements. Now I've started building a cutting list, and my, my cutting list, let's get that out of the way. So my cutting list, I had two sides at 280, so they were, already, they were the bits. What I've done with these is I've added the timber that I actually used in the, in the, in the framework. Um, I've added my back. <clears throat> now, when I cut it to fit, 
I then took the measurements off the actual part and wrote them down. So the next time I do a, a box this size, I've got all my measurements down and I've got my plan. The same with the bottom. The foot plate is going to be 188 by 96. I took that measurement from the box. Now, it's just a matter of putting the back in the place. <clears throat> a lot of people are saying, oh, this is really simple stuff. But there are a lot of people who don't understand it and, and find it difficult to work through that stuff. So that's why I carry on with it. So it's just a matter of measuring in the back. And I want it to go all the way to the front. So from the back to the front. So that measurement from there to there. And then the measurement from here to here. And that will give me my foot plate. Now, when I cut it, I'm going to cut it a tiny little bit bigger so that I can, I can fit it snug as I go along, either by using a plane or using a saw or something like that to actually get it to fit right. So let's do that now. We'll, we'll make the foot plate. So I have a piece of rose mahogany. I'll run it through the, the drum sander. And I'll cut it down to 240. So it's quite a nice piece. Um, it's bigger than I need. So... Let's go with that. Cold, yeah. cold skip. How you your... Sorry, Skip. Uh... Tell Skip how you engrave your box. Ah, right. Skip, I have questions out of the blue sometimes catch me unawares. But anyway, I have one of these little engravers and you can buy them they're really hard to find. I know they you can buy them in the US. Um, just a sec, just a sec. But this plug's an Australian plug. You guys in the US have got a different plug. But that's my little engraver. Now, it's not an engraver like a dentist drill. It doesn't actually rotate. It jumps up and down. Okay, so... It gives you a, a jump up and down point. Now, there's a reason for that, but I won't go into. But, uh, yeah, it's all done by hand. So, you just have to make sure you get the spelling right. You just got to get the spelling right. And um, I did a calligraphy course many, many years ago when I was teaching. And um, I used some of the technique to actually to build it. So it takes a bit of practice, but it's just a matter of drawing lines and, and doing your engraving. So it, it's just practice, mate. Just practice. It's fun. And it's fun. And it keeps it in a sort of that artistic value that you sort of people say, oh, but he's a real artist. Yep, well, that's right. Well, we, we, we stick to that artistic values of, uh, of what to do. So anyway. Some people don't like it. Some people like to use um, little, medallions. little medallions. We, we, we used to have we used to have a medallion that I fitted uh, many years ago. Uh, some people use laser printers or, or laser laser cutters. Um, there's lots of different techniques you can use. You can do it all fancy, but I like to do it by hand. It looks to me it looks like it's you know bespoke, bespoke and handmade. Okay, so my foot plate, 188 by 96. Okay. 198. And we'll drop a pop over to the drop saw. Well, incidentally, this is not glued together yet. So we're not going to do that because we have to cut a rebate in here to actually fit the shelf in. So um, I'm cutting the, the base because I want the base to... Plug things in here. Okay, ears on everybody. Okay. I 
probably helps to read your information properly. What have I got here? Not 198, it's 188. Somebody said to me once, your, write, your handwriting is like a doctor's writing. No one can read it. And sometimes I think they're right because I, I often make those mistakes. See if that one fits. Okay, so that's pretty much a perfect fit. It might need a little bit off it. Actually, I won't take any off it. I'll leave it as it is. Nice snug fit. Now, when I measure this, I'm measuring from the front to... Just turn that around. There's my rebate. I'm measuring from the rebate to the front and that will give me my measurement. I've got 96 millimetres there. So my piece of timber is 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square up one edge to start with. This is also an important thing to do is to square everything, make sure it's perfectly square. So that's my flush side, and now it's just a matter of 96 millimetres. And skip, don't ask me for the imperial measurement because I couldn't remember it. So there's my foot plate. It's flush at the back. So I've got that flush at the back. And when we turn it around, we're flush at the front as well. Okay, so the door will go up there. Okay, so back to the bench. Let me shift my bookwork. And if I put the back in it, <coughs> you can see it looks nice and flush in the back there as well. So that looks quite nice in there. So once that goes in and it's, it's glued in place, um, that's, that's what it's going to look like on the inside of there. So now what we need to do is we need to cut some rebates for the glasses. So the glasses are going to sit in here. And you want them centered. Get the second one out. And what we need to do is we need to make sure we've got these perfectly centered. Right. We need a little bit of space in the top there so that the glasses don't clink together when you when they rattle around. Now, when you have commercially made <coughs> objects, <coughs> you'll find sometimes that there is a variation in the sizes. So, when I think about these glasses, I think the foot might be a little bit bigger on both of them. One, one's bigger than the other. The, the bowl might be bigger. It might be taller. Um, they're all pretty close when they're commercial things like this. But um, if you have things that are made specifically for a reason, you'll find that they are all, they'll all be identical. <coughs> Just a sec. <coughs> So that's what we have sitting in place. It's 
Just need to make sure we've got some measurement there. <coughs> and I can use the lark tool for this. <coughs> Okay, so that's pretty right there. <coughs> Same at the back. Okay, so front to back, I have it right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a pencil. I'm just going to hold this still here and put a mark here. And a mark there. mark at the back and a mark at the back here okay so that's given me distances from front back things like that if you put the put the back in place you can see that the glasses don't touch the back panel what you can oh, I can yes you're right I can see that the glasses don't touch the back panel and they fit quite neatly into, into the thing, so that's that part. Now what we need to do is make sure the distance from here to here is exactly the same. <coughs> I've got more of a gap in the middle. I'm just going to do this by eye. I think that's okay, having that gap in the middle a little bit bigger. Yep. As Pam is pointing out, we still need to maintain the gap up here if we're going to do this this way. So that one there. Okay. At the moment, this is just rough, but we'll get it. We'll get it centered pretty much right. Okay. Pull them out. Going to break them. Piece out. Okay, square. Put my square up to the end there. Now here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my lark tool to that line. I'm just going to make sure this one is exact. And I need a ruler. I had one there. Okay, lots of lines. <coughs> that is a lark tool. If you want one of those lark tools, get onto Derek. Um, there's a link um, below. If you have a look down on our site, in our, you'll find a link to Derek, and you can get yourself one of these gadgets, one of these great little tools. Well, I don't know what I did there, but that's not square. Now, okay, so as you can see, what I've got there is I've got two squares. I need to find the center of those squares. All right, so that fits perfectly in the square that I have. 
fits perfectly in this square, I presume. Always check. Okay, so we fit perfectly there. I need to find my centre of those so that I can cut the rebate. Or the foot well, somebody called it once before. So the easiest way to find the centre Just diagonal line across corner to corner. So as you can see, even in your planning stage, you now need to go back to your drawing and write down the information you have just developed and you're developing the information so it's not something that's come to you from a plan or anything like that you're doing it yourself so we'll go back to our plan here I find myself a, a clean piece of paper and I want to draw my foot plate now last time we did this I used a pencil and no one could see what I was drawing. So I'm just going to draw a foot plate. So I'm going to draw a line here. Now, I'm not worrying about dimensions. All I'm worried about is getting a picture of the object. So I'm just going to do something similar to this. Just make sure I've got things relatively accurate so that I can refer to it later now I'm not worried if it isn't accurate at this stage all I'm worried about is making sure that I have a picture of the object that we're doing okay so let's find half of that it's 80 Quite square, but and there's my foot plate. So now all I need to do is take my measurements off here. I already know how long it is. Okay, so it was 188, remember. So from here to here, One eighty eight. And my distance across there was ninety six, I think. That's correct. Ninety six. And then I had to work out my centers here. So from the end. I've got 47 from this edge here. It's exactly the same as 47. So what I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit of room. That's the space between the glasses. I hope you can see that. Can you see it on the thing there, Pammy? Yeah, I'll wait until you finish. Right. Because it keeps going out of focus. Oh, okay. If you're hand movement. So you can see I haven't been really, really accurate about it. All I've done is given me a given myself a diagram of that there. We can fix this up later. Okay, so find my centre. Same thing. From there to there. And now we put some measurements in. So that's all I'm going to do now. So I'm going to put some measurements in. So my measurements from the centre of each of the things to there is 47 millimetres. 
So let's do this. To the edge. Forty seven from front to forty eight. Let's see if that's centered there. Yep, it's my center. So from there to there, I'm going to have to do it on this one here. As you can see, during the process of actually doing this, we're actually building a picture. So my distance from front to back. There's 48. And that gives me my centers to the drawing. So it's not, even though it looks complicated, it looks, long, it looks like there's lots of lines there and lots of things that are, um, you know, interfering with stuff. We've got an idea of actually where we're at. So I just need to measure that is five millimeters. It's actually five and a half millimeters. So my measurement from here to here, five millimeters, my measurement from there to there, is four millimeters, and my measurement between the centers Seven millimeters. I think that's upside down, but it'll it, it, you get the idea. So, so now we have a complete drawing, and all we need to do is draw a circle. The easiest way to draw a circle: trace around something. That's not going to fit. That's too big. Oh, I'll try the other end of the glass. <laughs> That's too small. I think you get it the doesn't idea. matter. I think you get the idea. So we want a foot plate in there. It's a bit, a bit rough that bit, but never mind. And the diameter of that. Get my calipers out. So there's a fair bit that goes into planning. The diameter of that is eighty five millimeters. to there. There's 85. Okay, so that gives me some idea of where I'm going with this. Um, it, it, it's a simple drawing that is not particularly accurate but it gives you all the dimensions that's necessary for, for you to continue with your plan. Okay, so that will stay in my book as well. You better put a label on the top of it. Um, it's my twin. Um, glass cabinet. Foot plate. Okay. Now, building your plan, which is the next step. 
Now, this is where quite a lot of people lose faith and lose faith in what they're doing because they can't convert that onto something that they've got for a number of different reasons. And the predominant one is the lack of equipment. Now, not everybody is able to fill their workshop full of nice fancy tools and um, expensive bits of equipment that allows them to be able to just walk to a tool and perform a task. So sometimes you need to develop a tool to actually do the job. And point in that is I didn't use <coughs> a fancy piece of equipment to get this little cut out here. I built myself a template where I could use a router bit, which I have, um, just to give me that shape. So this is the point. You need to be able to sort of develop your tool system or use the tools that you've got to create what you're, what you're, what you're after. And if you don't have, if you've, if you've gone and bought yourself a really fancy pair, set of plans, and you don't have all of the tools necessary to actually build that, that um, object, then you're up the creek without a paddle, really. So basically what you have to do is develop around it. And by building your own plans, you can build the plan around the tools that you have. I hope that makes sense, but that's the idea. So I have over in the corner there, I have a really fancy lathe. And when I built the foot plate for the bottom of the box, you may not have a fancy lathe. But when I built the foot plate for the bottom of this box here, I had a square piece of material like that. And I fitted it into the chuck on the lathe. And it's just a matter of doing it nice and tight and then just turning out the desired size. So it's, it, it, it's just a small turning project that I, that I did that created that. I can't do that to that to get it accurate because I've got two foot plates. So I had to start thinking about how am I going to go about doing that. And if I had a board of plan and that was the, the bits and pieces, I'd be in the same boat. I'd still be struggling to find out how the hell am I going to do that. So anyway, I looked around my workshop and came up with what I think will, is going to work. This little gadget, okay? little trimmer router. But one of the problems that I have is the foot plate on the bottom of the trimmer router is smaller than the bit I want to take out. So how do I sit it so that I can actually get a clean cut all the way around? So then I had to start thinking and get, get grey matter working properly and uh, figure out how to do that. Now, somewhere um, around the trap somewhere, I've seen um, a nice little Perspex plate that actually goes onto the bottom of that. Now, I couldn't remember where I saw it or um, who made it or developed it or anything like that. So I had no idea who was doing that. So I thought, what's the next step? Make one. And so, I made one, just a piece of Perspex. So I drilled it out so that I had the big hole so that I could rest the follower on top of that and the small hole so that the other end of the follower would fit into there and then I had to drill the four holes to actually fit it onto the bottom of um, the trimmer router. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've made a couple of errors during the process and drill holes in the wrong place, but that's not going to bother it because it's going to be flat anyway for the whole, whole process. So I did that. Then I had to build a template, which I've done in plastic, for the rebate. So again, I had to go through a process to actually get to that stage. And this is something that you may have to do. And it's just a piece of plastic that you can buy this stuff here at, at uh, hardware stores. It's not that expensive. <coughs> but it does mean that I'm not going along and buying expensive pieces of brass and, uh, or expensive tools that are, that are going to clog the workshop up. I'm building it for a purpose. So that's going to be what's going to happen here. So here's what happens. Now, I haven't used this yet. So... We'll see what happens. So here's my, my, my template. And as you can see on the template, I don't know if you can see it. You can see I've got centre marks. There's one there, there's one there, there's one here and here. So I've got to line that up on the centre there and sort of attach it somehow to my piece of timber and then route out the rebate. So <clears throat> it wasn't a simple task of just building that and then it, there was a, bit of, a fair bit of testing involved. And as you can see in here, you can see I've, 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 I've tested it a little bit and I've actually got it to work on a piece of scrap so that it actually fits quite nicely. It's, it's quite a nice fit. So that, that's the size of that, that little template that I've made there. So just on a piece of scrap, I've done that. The reason this is all a bit dodgy is because I was using that and it kept slipping into the hole. That, it, it just fits perfectly in the hole. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. So we can't do that. That's why I've had to build the, top, build the platform for it. So that's where we're at. Now, all I have to do now is find my centres here so that I can line this up and I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape to actually glue that to the board and then we'll clamp the whole lot down and reroute out the rebate. So finding my centre. How did you cut the first bits, the circle in the first bits? <coughs> um, I used a hole saw. So you can use a drill and a hole saw. Who asked that? Brian, Brian, you can buy you can buy um, from most hardware stores. You can buy very large um, hole saws. Um, quite often, they're in the metal center, metal part of the center. Um, and it's just a matter of drilling out the right size hole and then doing a little bit of work to make sure it's nice and smooth. So, what I want to do here is I want to find my center. I'm measuring the inside lines, not the outside. So that's uh, 87. So that's 43 and a half. Square that across. <clears throat> Got to have my centers marked, so you can tell that's the center because it runs straight through the middle of where that is. Okay, so that's going to fit. Right there. Bit of double sided tape. I've had some here somewhere. Must have put it away.
Okay, so this is going to be a first for this little tool. I haven't used it before. I only finished making it yesterday afternoon. So what I'm just doing here is taking the cover off it to start with. While it's stuck to the mat. I need somebody with really, really tiny fingers to get these. Where's my piece of plastic? Correct. And that to accommodate the cutter and the follow and the shape of the cutter. The shape of the cutter and the and the follower that fits into the router. Yeah, so you might need to repeat that. Yep. I'll go over that. Just let me get this on here first and then I'll go over that for you. Big pudgy fingers is sort of not a, a conducive to, to doing little stuff like this. The reason I'm putting four bits on is because I want to sit flat and even so that when I do yeah. cut it, it, uh, it will sit flat. Because if, if you put only two bits on there, you'll find that it'll, it'll rock while you're cutting it. Okay. Let me stick this into place. so we stuck onto that right let's go back to this if you look at if you look at the um, just get my fingers in here you can see I've got a follower a brass follower now you can buy those in packets from Carvatech they've got they've got different sizes so you can use whatever size you like what you need to do is when you're doing your testing is to make sure that you've got a router bit that actually will give you the, exactly the right size. So the distance from the router bit to the outside of the follower, you need to allow for that in your um, your hole size. So when I sit my glass in that, you can see that there's a little bit of room around the edge of the glass. All right. So in your planning you've got to uh, think about things that, that might alter what you have to do. So I needed to make sure that the distance from the edge of the hole to the edge of my uh, rebate was the same as the distance from the edge of the router bit to the edge of the follower. Okay, so that distance from there to there has to be identical to that distance that's in here. So thinking about those sorts of things and, and coming up with, with the right size may take four or five goes. It might take a lot of practice. It might, might take something where you have to build another tool to actually do the job. So think about those things when, you, when you're actually doing your planning. Okay. Let's see what it looks like once I've cut. So what I have to do here is sit that on there and I can rotate all the way around. Now I've got to go all the way out to here to get it to touch the edge of the hole. 
It's got to come all the way over to there, so I'm going to need some support there somewhere. This is going to be interesting. Shift some of this stuff so that I've got some room to play with. We might get one of the holes done before the end, before eleven o'clock. <laughs> Now the depth of the hole has to be the same depth as the inside of there to the bottom of there. Okay, so it's tapered. When you are working on the lathe, you can actually taper it with your tools on the lathe, but you can't do that here because it's going to be a flat cut. So what I need is some support there, which could be, I've got a bit of timber here. That'll work. Let's use these cute little router bits. Uh, sorry, cute little. Clamps. Is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Going to be going to work. Oh, I think that should work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the height just to touch it. Okay, so I'm only just touching it. And that's going to be my first cut just to see if it works. So I don't need earmuffs for these because it's a really quiet little machine. So here we go folks, first go. So as you can see, I have a tiny little gap between the edge of the cut and the edge of my hole. So now I'm just going to go a little bit deeper. So if I just recess that a bit more, just come down another millimetre or so. Now this will take a couple of goes because, like I say, it's the first time I've used this. Now tilt your, your route a bit over. Drop it in, come up to the edge. And the follower should go around the plastic. Now we can clean out a lot of the inside stuff. See what we've got there. Okay. What RPM do you use in cold? I've just got that sitting on um, on three, so it's not very fast. If you have a look on the top of the, the my router there, I've only got it at three with that little trimmer. 
I'm not cutting very deep, so I really don't need a whole lot of high speed. So if we fit the glass in there, that glass fits into that rebate perfectly. Look at that. How good is that? <laughs> I'm excited. I just need to go deeper now, so it's just a matter of recutting and going that tiny little bit deeper. Now I'll do that over the um, during while you're sleeping tonight, and um, I'll get that sorted so that. Um, when we come back next week, I will start looking at um, doing the, the centre shelf because we've got to pull the box apart to actually do that. So actually the task worked. Um, I'm quite happy with it and we will get, um, we'll get the foot plate made nicely and um, I'll sand it all up and go through the process. But like I say, I didn't have the tools to do it with uh, a CNC or any other fancy piece of equipment. I had to make it myself, so it's just a piece of plastic that's actually made into a platform for that. So anyway, that'll be it for today. And um, now if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any other questions, I haven't looked at the questions today. Pam has been relaying a few things. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail next week. I'll have a look and see what the questions are and I'll try and answer your questions next week. So a little bit of patience with that and I will see if I can sort out that sound problem. I, I'm not quite sure what it is. It um, have, uh, some, of the, some of the folks on the chat are saying that the problem has gone away. Oh. It might only be temporary. Okay, it might be temporary. I don't know. Well, we'll soon see. I'll have, a little, have another look at it and see if there's anything else that... Um, that I can figure out um, over the over the over the week and and see if we can get get things sorted. So I might uh, might need to um, investigate with a technician or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens anyway. So have a good week, everybody, and um, I will see you all next week. And we'll get the centre part made, and we'll look more at planning. Um, I'll draw up uh, that foot plate uh, better so that you can actually see what I've done. In the workshop, you'll find that you can do things simply and then you can take it to the kitchen table and sit down and draw it properly and, and come up with a plan. And then you have your own plan, okay? Something that you develop. You can put your name on it, okay? So have a good week, everybody, and I will see you all next week. Toodaloo.